Hello, my name is Mordred Viking, and I'd like to welcome you to episode 8 of this Let's Play Victoria 2. This is the Army with the States, and we are the North German Federation. So between episodes, I noticed that Austria is being super sneaky and is trying to steal Denmark away from us. They've actually got all the way up to friendly before I noticed, so we are going to have to... Uh, I think I'm going to just outright ban them and then spend the time uh, reducing all of their stuff. So we're just banning them, and then we're going to reduce their opinion... We're increasing our own opinion of them there. The Ottomans don't think they need any more protection. So the Dutch and the Americans are both wanting to get involved. Oh, wow, the Americans are friendly. Yeah, we do need to focus on the Ottomans still. And in fact, to that end, I'm going to ban the Americans and I'm going to spend some time reducing them in stature as well. Meanwhile, in Egypt, I think we're okay. Oh, the Dutch are friendly there too. Crap. The future of the economy. Economic policy debated in the North German Federation. The election debates in North German Federation have been going on for a few days now, and the issue that seems to be becoming the determining factor for the outcome of the election is, perhaps unsurprisingly, the economy. Several theories are being advanced, but the voters want a clear statement on government policy. How will the government make sure that every North German citizen has a chicken in his pot during the coming term of office? So virtually no one's in favour of laissez-faire. All pops in the North German Federation become 10% more in favour of laissez-faire, and the percentage of those who are supporting a planned economy gains 20% militancy. Now, quite a few of them do have planned economy. I think, actually, the best one is interventionalism. So more people become interventionist, which is not a liberal stance. And I'm kind of hoping that we get another party in. That's... Um, uh, no, I mean, the main reason we switch liberal is because they are laissez-faire. So the planned economy people are going to get really ticked off. But this is going to mean that more people are supporting laissez-faire. I mean, state capitalism is not bad either. Wait, no, so it's planned. So in order of like how Ruth or how... Uh, centralize it is planned economy, state capitalism, interventionalism, laissez-faire. Interventionalism is actually the one I like the most. So maybe we should have stayed conservative. We're going to do that. We'll go get away from the reactionaries. So on the 9th of December 1849 we'll have that new ruler. All right, so the Dutch are definitely causing problems, so I'm going to go and discredit the Dutch here. Oh, no, that's France. Cool. And then Belgium, they are neutral. They are growing fast, but they are neutral. Egypt, once we have it. In fact, Egypt, we're going to tone down to a two for now. And we need to start really thinking about how to go after the Austrians. I still can't get the war card. Now I can justify So who is in your sphere? Baden, Bavaria, Lucca, Modena, Parma, Tuscany, Wittenberg. I mean, cutting them down to size does a f massive amount of damage. Humiliate, what does that do? I think that just reduces their prestige, yeah. Increases our prestige while lowering theirs. It's not hugely important, especially not against another major power. It's amount of fortifications, don't care about that. We're not trying to liberate people. Cutting them down to size means they disarm and pay reparations. That means our army is pathetic. And then if we attack them again, it will be even easier. I don't really need to acquire states from them, although taking Czech Republic or Bohemia is really valuable because Bohemia is a massive industrial capacity. And that would strip that capacity away from Austria as well. Oh wow, we dropped a fourth. Our army's dropped. Oh, that's probably because we're no longer jingoistic. Hmm. Maybe going liberal was a bad idea. I'm increasingly beginning to think that. <laughs> um... I think we got to go with prepare the... Um, Take from Sphere of Influence. We're going to try and steal Bavaria from them. 
or multiple if we can. All right. Uh, okay, so we can sphere Egypt now. That's sphere. Marvelous. Now let's reduce you down to a one. Citizens and the Res Publica. Citizenship policy debated in North German Federation. Two debaters are arguing heatedly in the Kwame air of the town hall. The audience sits dumbfounded as words like aliens and minorities and ethnic and cultural groups are thrown between the two. One argues that immigrants are to adopt the dominant culture of their new homeland, while the opponent believes that immigrants should retain their cultural heritage and that the North German Federation will be strengthened by the influx of fresh perspective. So almost nobody is in favor of residency it's all limited citizenship or full citizenship residency i believe it was the conservative system yeah limited is definitely liberal so i think that's what we're going to do so that would upset half of the people well either way it's going to upset half the people we need to learn it limit the citizenship Okay, now we have Egypt. Our factories should become even more valuable. We could really do with wood. The biggest wood producer is Russia, but we can't do anything about that. I think the next biggest is actually Sweden. Yeah. Definitely. So we need to try and get Sweden into our pocket if possible I mean, they're already allied but they're not um, they're a secondary power I think but they're just not in our sphere the election is finished the elections are finished liberaldom party well, liberal oh liberal democratic party is now the ruling party with 88% of the vote that's a landslide and a half conservatives down to 11% yikes a coalition of the Liberal and Anarcho-Liberal parties got 88.29% of the vote and will form the basis of government. Okay, then. So, yeah, we are just Liberal Party. Those three are still the, the available ones. Now, later on, new party types will become active and available as new ideologies are developed. For example, an anarchism and socialism, even communism. But they don't exist yet. Oh, we can force an election through. But right now, people are very happy with uh, liberalism. So actually, conservatism in the upper house is pretty popular. And the voters... Ah! Right. So because it's the rich voting right now, the rich love liberalism because this, zero tax, basically. Um, but the people themselves are still somewhat old-fashioned and they have a low pluralism pluralism is how politically active they are the less pluralistic they are the more they want to stay with the status quo so because they have a low pluralism just because we haven't developed that at all yet where can we see pluralism i know it's it's here somewhere um it's, it's all tied into the conscientiousness, the pluralism, and the militancy. Pluralism is how politically active they are. Conscientiousness is how selfish they are. So if their needs aren't being met, then they become more pluralistic, I think. Meaning that they want to have more of an interest in politics, otherwise they don't, and they want the status quo. If their conscientiousness... Sorry, if their conscientiousness is, no, is low, then they are more pluralistic. If it's high, then they are less because they like the status quo yeah that's right and if they're just generally pissed off then militism goes up right so take from sphere was detected unfortunate is the number of clergy dropping slightly so i think we may need to go to 55 percent to make sure that doesn't drop anymore and the administrators administration is definitely staying the same so reactionary has grown a bit liberal is massively grown and conservatism has massively declined as they're kind of reflecting the uh, the politics in power currently can't 
quite tell if our economy is going up or not. <laughs> Let me see like a monthly trend rather than this daily trend because it's just up and down, up and down, up and down. Despite having very much non-made-up proof that Austria are up to no good, there seems to be no public or international support for rescuing the poor lesser nations from their sphere of influence. Uh, CV generation is slowed. That is unfortunate. How is the Austrian military right now? Aha, cool. Uh, 50 to our 71. So we should thrash them militarily. Although you used to allied with... You are allied with a lot of people. Not really big. In fact, you're not allied with Russia or France. You're only allied with the Netherlands, which I can definitely stomp all over. At this point, specialists formed certain groups that serviced specialised railroad units. These could quickly load and reload trains and reduce the full movement. Sorry, and service the full movement of army units. Mobilisation size plus five, plus one percent, which is actually huge. Right, it's gone from forty-four to fifty-three divisions from that one percent alone. You know what? If we're going to go to war, then I think that we do need to build up a surplus. So we're going to maximise. The taxes, uh, except for the rich. If I was taxing you 50%, you'd still only generate 55. No, we'll leave you. Oh, army spending's gone. It's got a limit. So that's what this bar means. It has to be below that. So defense spending can be limited to 75, and tariffs can be limited at 25. So we're going to raise tariffs to 20 just so we get this surplus for the war. In fact, we could reduce our land for our land limits right now while we're not at war. That's going to reduce their organization, much like the land maintenance modifiers. That's fine. We're just going to leave you guys kind of whoops, here in the no. That's a navy. So we know where to find you when it's time for a war. And now that we have railroads, we should be moving a lot more quickly too. You see that? Ganging up with even 60 in a province no longer causes supply issues. No supply limit again. 50. Oh, it should have caused problems. But thanks to our increased in te uh, technology, the supply limit is now higher. Hapag? Hapag? I have no idea what that means. Leading merchants of Hamburg founded the Hamburg Amerikanische Packetfahrt. Aktien Gesellschaft, providing for transport across the Atlantic. Their services are, sorry, their services were welcomed by the constantly growing number of emigrants to the Americas. We gain five clippers and prestige. Cool. Listless unemployed. Is that really a problem? Not really. I've been around to all the workplaces in the city, but I just can't seem to get a break, sir. I wonder what to do. I can't go home and let the grass grow around my feet all day. My family trusts me to support them, but what should a poor sod do when there's no jobs available? With jobs scarce and creditors inversely plentiful, many of the poorer classes are having trouble making ends meet. Uh, poor strata get low subsidies. No, support low su subsidies. Or we can build le local reform support. Which means everyone becomes in favour of low subsidies and they gain one conscientiousness, which I'm actually okay with because that is a minimum wage and that means the people have more money which means they have more money to spend on stuff and who produces that stuff our factories like everything is kind of funneling towards the strength of my economy and my investors need to start investing more like this area Schlesen is full and you are building one there you also need to turn these off I kind of wish I'd kept conservatism now you're still building that, okay. And at least I can still tweak the uh, focuses, so... Actually, Saxon is currently oversubscribed. Ostprosen could probably do with some more people. Brandenburg's still doing... Oh no, you're doing the clerks. Crap. Have I got too many clerks? Not quite, but I think I want to start focusing you on craftsmen. And then actually, for Schlesen, you could probably... Yeah, you need clerks badly. Clerks, basically, okay, so the craftsmen are the guys who actually drive the production in those factories. The clerks are the ones who 
um, make them efficient. So if you have too few clerks and too many craftsmen, then they're bringing in far too many raw materials and wasting them, therefore losing money. For too long, people have suffered under the malign influence of Austria. For the good of all involved, we must reveal the evidence of Austria's mismanagement to the world and bring their sphere members under our wing for their own good. Plus 25% core uh, sphere construction speed. I totally forgot about these guys, and you are friendly. Decrease opinion of Austria. Bye-bye. And in the Ottoman Empire, who was friendly here? The Dutch and the Americans. So we're going to ban... No, no, no. We're going to decrease the opinion of the Dutch. Down to cordial, because that means I'll have to build it up again. I always kind of forget about this. I really like the influence system, but I also really hate it because it's really micro-intensive. Uh, problematic. Okay, we're going to increase our opinion in Sweden. And... How is our opinion with the people that we are trying to improve relations with? The Ottomans, 150. Let's increase relations with you. And with Egypt... Oh, wow, Egypt's really low. The higher your relations, the faster or the, the, the more efficient your influence gains, which is why we're doing that. We've gained the take from sphere of influence CB against Austria. So this could put us into a war with the Netherlands. We have built up a fairly large amount of money. We wish to take Bavaria from their sphere. It will cost 20. We could always try and get another one formulated after that. So what I'm thinking of doing here is we are going to raise our army maintenance again. Edumacation. Are you still losing population? No, you are gaining them again. So I think 50 is actually about right. We'll reduce you down to 40 because administration still hasn't gone down. Social spending, we have none. Subsidies, we have none because we're liberal. Our industries are still building up. We just have the small arms factory. I'd kind of like that to be finished. Oh, we're still getting railroads too. Uh, yeah, every most places are level two railroads, or else expanding to level two. Oh wow, level 3 is a huge one. Let me find a level 1. So level 1 to 2 increases factory th th thoroughput by 32%, RGO output by 32 troop movement by 10 Is that cumulative? Hang on, so it's 0, 6, 4, 16, 16, 5. Let's find a level 2 and then compare level 2. 32, 32, 10, so no. So that is just totals. Okay. I was going to say. <laughs> so high and low pressure is going to finish soon. Now I'm going to guess that we have better military tech than Austria. We're just going to wait until this is finished. And then it is 1850, so we can switch to the next technology, whatever it may be. Plus we're also letting our organization build up on our troops. Okay, technology is completed. We could get the Iron Railroad... Uh, even more education efficiency. Oh, I'm not sure oh, we need it. Oh, when we can get... <laughs> um, yeah. So it's roughly every 10 to 20 years that the next tier of technologies become available. So, with that in mind, I think we do need the army decision-making because military tactics plus 25% and the morale plus 20%. Hugely important. And then delegated power is another 30% tactics. Plus I would really like to have breech-loaded rifles. It does quite dramatically increase the supply consumption of your unit, especially when you have the breech-loaded rifle armament. But it also increases the attack. And we're going to get the army decision-making, because that one's just important. And we're going to wait until our organization is up, and then we're going to declare war, I think. And we're going to call our allies and see what happens. Are we going to mobilize... Not immediately. I want to see how we do. Because we have our full army. 
present. Now, I haven't gone up to the maximum, so we can have... We have a little bit of space for reinforcement. Um, right. We're not quite there yet. And the next thing I must do is also double-check my generals, because you do suffer prestige penalties when you are changing generals when you're at war. And I just want to make sure that we haven't got any complete idiots in charge. Uh, Ludendorff, I actually want you near the front. So in Katowice. And you can go here. And have you guys kind of as a, a second line. Because now with Diggin becoming increasingly important, generals with defensive bonus also become increasingly important. Like, this is the dawn of the age of the trench warfare. Not by speeches and votes of the majority are the great questions of the time decided, but by iron and blood. Otto von Bismarck. A new rich load of iron ore has been discovered in the Gotha mine. While this ore is rich, it is located in a perilous depth just beyond the reach of our present mining technology. We could attempt to extract the ore, but doing so will come carry with it a cost in lives and blood. Dig deeply. <laughs> dig! Dig! Nothing wrong can possibly go from this. Actually, Katowice is a little far. We're going to go here, because this is a really nice little border area to fight over. It all being forested. In fact, do we have any more defensive generals that we can field? Like you. I really wish there was a way of sorting these guys. No. Prussian military doctrine is clearly attack, 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 attack. There's a defensive guy. Nikolaus von Schlieffen. Uh, I think we want two more, if possible. Not you. Actually, anyone who comes down here, this is open territory. We can attack that. So, Kolom goes to Breslau. Wrangel goes to Gizno. Actually, Waldeck's really strong as well. You can go to Leipzig and be a reinforcement guy. And then it's just, actually, Molka is one of the best attackers we have. Kolom's the least good. Okay, so Kolom we're going to replace with a defensive guy if we can find another one. There's one, Hoffman. Not very good, though. Anyone else? More defensive-minded generals. So we're going to try and provoke the Austrians into attacking us. I think it's got to be Hoffmann. Hoffmann, go and guard that. Okay. And then we'll be in position. So these guys are all our defensive armies, and they can kind of support each other. Then we have two very aggressive generals who are going to sit here to attack anything that comes into Opelm or Katowice. And I did not mean to move both of you. Alright. Slow this down a little bit. Save the game, just in case. <laughs> I haven't had to save scum yet, and I don't want to. Oh no, sorry, that's not true. I did save scum once. Okay, take from Sphere of Influence. We are going to call our allies. UK will accept. Everyone says they will accept. It doesn't always happen, but they say they are. Why can't I proceed? What is going? Oh, right. Because I have to say what I'm going for. I'm going for Bavaria. I think Bavaria would be lovely in the um, North German Federation. Okay, war has been declared. And while we are thinking about war, we should be. Doing some stuff here. Now, why can't I do this? 12th of January, I see. Okay, the Ottomans have joined. Serbia has refused. I didn't even know I was allied with them. Switzerland refused. Two Sicilies did. Sweden did. Denmark did. UK did. And the UK has become the leader. Great. Because they are higher tier. Once we've, like, ousted them as the number one, it'll be fine. Mexico has accepted the peace for Ar quiet Arizona. Austria is still behind us. This is... Wow! That's a huge difference! 316 points to 160. Wow, what a gap. Alright, Austria. Come at me, bro. Here they come. 
You go into a Katowitz, you go into Katowitz. Okay, so Moltke is my main attack guy. You're going in there. We're going to sit in our Pelm. Back screw. We'll send in the full 60,000 to go and beat that army. They'll arrive separately. Just. Alright, attack commenced. Battle of Katowitz. We have a plus three, they have a plus two. We have cavalry, they don't. That doesn't really matter hugely. Now we just outnumber them massively. And are going to absolutely squish them. Marvellous. Oh, right, yeah, Bavaria. We're at war with Bavaria. Um, we should probably go and occupy some of Bavaria. And also go and fight the Dutch. Here come the Danes. Let's do this. And we'll take out the Bavarians with our attack armies while you guys are going to focus more on defensive operations. We're going to do the defensive operations in their lands. I think that sounds entirely reasonable. And we'll have you as a kind of a, a reserve. And thanks to our cavalry units, we're going to be taking this stuff super duper quick. Which is lovely. Okay, the Danes are assisting us in the attack. You guys are marching north, but we outnumber them so hugely, it's kind of ridiculous. Okay, Sweden, we can do more increase opinion-y stuff. They are now friendly. Marvellous. And the Dutch are still friendly. Now I can decrease the opinion of the Netherlands. Do that. And... Austria. Bye-bye. All right, moving our armies over. We're starting to occupy some of this stuff. Okay, that's another victory. You're moving into here, so let's bring you up a bit, bring you forwards. I'm going to try and siege that back, that's fine. Okay, next battle. Two to four. Wow, they have a really good defensive general here. Unfortunately for them, our army is just so much stronger. Mostly because of our rather enhanced military technologies, undoubtedly, and they've probably all... Um, What's the word? Mobilised. Austria certainly has, yeah. Britain didn't bother. Britain's like, nah, it's fine. The Netherlands did. Okay, that's that victory. How are we doing for morale? I think we're just fine. So we are going to go here. Which should stop you moving, and we're just going to attack that. Okay, we're winning more stuff. And although we don't have an attacking general here, we're just going to hit him with everything. Are we going to get him before he escapes? No. Curses! That would have been perfect. Okay, battle. 34,000 against 35,000. We have a minus one. They still have their really good general, but we have the morale advantage. And we're doing... Actually, they're doing more damage right now. And they do outnumber us, but our morale should mean that we win, unless those reinforcements arrive. Meanwhile, we have 109,000 men here beating up the Austrians. Okay, we won that one. Good. Which means that we can continue sieging stuff. Just keep on the advance. This one I'm not convinced about. Especially if these guys join Baden. Yeah, I think we're going to have to back off and then lick our wounds. Okay, Baden's in. We are indeed going to back off to Lumburg. Minus 3.5% war score. How are we doing? We're currently on 7% and <laughs> look at that difference. Anyway, I think that is now going to be it for now. So thank you very much for watching. If you are enjoying this series, then please do hit that like button. If you haven't done so already, then do consider subscribing. And if you have any tips or advice for me, let me know in the comments. Thank you very much for watching. I'll catch you next time. Goodbye.